you're listening to Prep Period, the only podcast for teachers that's focused on quick wins and actionable tips that can be implemented in your classroom tomorrow. Prep Period starts in three, two, one. Welcome to the Prep Period Podcast. My name is Brian Bean. I'm your host as always. Uh, In today's episode, we're going to discuss navigating the digital classroom. We're also going to look at some technology tools to help with that. And the thing I'm most excited about, we're going to talk about how to get your students more involved with each other since they're not in a live classroom anymore. Our guest today is Lindsay Smith from Stuart W. Kramer High School. Welcome, Lindsay. We are recording. All right. So first things first, let's get our listeners a little bit more familiar with you, Lindsay. Uh, So Lindsay Smith is originally from Connellsville, Pennsylvania. Did I say that right? You did. Connellsville, Pennsylvania, just outside Pittsburgh, Uh, but has been a social studies teacher in North Carolina in the past, for about the past 10 years or so. She is a graduate of Muskingum University. Did I say that right? Muskingum. 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 All right. Uh, with a master's degree in secondary education, Lindsay is married with a daughter and two dogs. Uh, she enjoys learning new methods of technology for the classroom, classroom management, and curriculum development. So, I'm super excited to talk about this uh, particular topic. So, I let's just dive right in, right? Uh, so, this has obviously been a major issue on everybody's minds this last year, and you know, at the tail end of of uh, 2019, and it seems like it dominated 2020, obviously, the, the name, the year that will not be spoken of, right? <laughs> uh, but it seems like plenty of teachers out there are still struggling. They're still trying to, feed, you know, they still feel helpless when it comes to just trying to navigate the, the hybrid model or even the fully virtual classes. But you seem to have gotten a, a good grasp on that. So what has worked for you you know, when it comes to things like structure, organization, any tips that you can share, what has worked for you? Okay, so it's going to sound a little bit weird, but one of the things that I have learned um, from March up until now uh, is that you really need to be as detailed and as simple as possible for your students. Um, When I talk about details, that comes more in your instruction and you want more detailed bullet points, walk them through as if they were sitting right in front of you. If you are doing it remote or virtual, um, you know, step them through what they need to do. Uh, When it comes to simple, the less clicks your students can make Mm. to get what they need to do, the better. Um, So we have a program, we use Canvas, um, which, you know, really works out right on the homepage of their course. I have a chart schedule with Monday through Friday with the dates and they click, you know, Monday's assignment, it takes them right there, but you could easily do it with any type of uh, hyperdoc, whether you use Google Docs or Word, um, you know, have it set up for them, a chart that takes them right to the assignment. Once they're in the assignment, that's where the detail part comes in. Um, I've also learned that things as simple as I use emojis. Things are graded by percentage at my school. Uh, So like tests are worth 60% of their grade, whereas quizzes are 20% of their grade. So I have a big like boom sign um, on any assignments that I give them that are test grades. So they know virtually if they're looking at their schedule for the week, they can see right just by the pictures without reading anything, homework, homework, quiz, test, and they can prioritize. Mm. You know, uh, it, it's interesting when you, you, you mention the, the clicks, the simple is, is better. You'd be surprised how big of a deal and what a difference maker that is. Just to give them that quick uh, navigation process to get into what they're doing. Uh, if that if that process itself is bogged down, you lose so many of the kids. They just, yeah. you lose it's, them. It, you can give them more th- things once they actually get into the assignment. Yeah. Uh, but to, you know, their initial thing, like a lot of these kids, they log on, they look and they just want to, what do I do today? Yep. Yeah. So it sounds like it might take a little bit of extra work for the teacher, but that the back end reward uh, of just taking the time to get that, that little bit extra organization, that little bit extra structure, uh, it sounds like it's, it's worth it. So now obviously I'm not in the classroom anymore. 
Right. In fact, I like to joke around that I got out just in, at the right time. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, this is the best time. This is this is where you really get to put your your skills, your knowledge, you know, all that stuff to the test. You really get to try sure. some stuff. Yeah, we'll go with that. It has nothing to do with I'm really glad I'm not a teacher during COVID. <laughs> but uh, I do, I miss it in many respects. I miss being in the classroom. I, but, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say I got out at the right time. Uh, <laughs> but when I think about it, when I think about just trying to teach and all this craziness, um, like I get what you're saying about being able to, to put things in the LMS and, and whatnot. But I think about the way that I taught and I was very interactive in person. We had a lot of, uh, a lot of my style and the things that I did were just, I mean, it's built for a live setting, right? How do you convert a live lesson, a, a lesson that was contrived for a live setting? How do you convert that to a digital format and still have it be effective? Do you have any tips for listeners? Because I got no tips for them because I don't know how on the, how I'd be able to do that. What, what are your thoughts? All right. I don't know if they're tips or tricks or, um, you know, just kind of how it's worked for me. Um, essentially, it takes time and it takes patience. Um, I've been able to get my kids to do a gallery crawl, even though we're not there. I don't um, know what a gallery crawl is. Okay, so gallery crawl is generally, I teach history, okay. so you may have pictures hanging all around the room, and I would give them, let's say, a reading about a historical event, and then they're supposed to go match the reading to, to the image. maybe picture, to oh, the image. Okay. So the kids are constantly moving around the room, um, so literally crawling around the, the gallery, Thanks crawling the around the gallery the crawl. Oh, yeah. I like it. Um, but obviously when you are virtual, you can't really move, <laughs> uh, there, they're there. Uh, so one thing I had to do is I would give them, it takes a lot of links, a lot of hyperlinks, um, but they would have a reading and then there would be a question on the reading where they could match it up with the picture. Uh, but they have to have the right answer to get the next link. Mm. for the next reading. So they can't progress until they get it they right. They can't progress until they actually get it correct. Um, but it takes, I mean, trust me, it's a lot easier to tape stuff up on the wall and hand them printouts of the reading and say, you know, sure. this is what we're going to do. I mean, it probably took me a couple hours to set it up. Uh, but the benefits outweigh it. Um, instead of my kids listening to me lecture them through the camera, if you're fully virtual, um, or listen to me, you know, lecture to the kids on the camera that are home and to the students in person, um, they got to interact. Um, you know, I, I, we're going to talk more about the interaction here in a second, but yes. you, you brought something up to my mind, like, as I'm thinking about that activity specifically you just described, one of the values of that activity in a live setting is that kinesthetic component. Right. Get up, move around, get out of your desk, walk around, get some of that energy out. Uh, how do you do that virtually? Okay. Or so is it even as much of a need virtually because they're at home and they can get up and move right. around anytime they want? Um, it sounds a little bit weird, uh, but there are still games that I played um, last March when we were all locked down. No one was leaving their houses yeah. and people were getting a little stir crazy. Uh, I happened to be teaching AP World at the time. And so we did review games. Pretty much all of our live class sessions were review games, uh, one of which was basketball. And so I had the, I know, I had them broken up into teams and the teams would have to answer the question. Uh, and it was the first one to buzz in, you know, when you're doing Zoom or Google Meet, you can have it set to talk. Yeah. And the first person to talk would pop, pop up on the camera and that's how I would know who it was. If they got the question correct, then they could shoot a basket for an extra point. And I give out what they call, I call Smith bucks. Uh, and Smith bucks can be used to help you with a essay. If you're, we're writing an essay or phone a friend during a test or even extra credit down the road. So they really want those Smith bucks. Um, and so 
for them to shoot the basket. I literally had them get their trash cans. <laughs> bring your and, own. So, yep. A different kind of B-O-Y-B, right? Bring your bring own basket. Your own basket and ball up whatever your parents didn't care about what you bought up to there toss it. They'd aim the camera and their team would be, you know, they had to select which one of their players was going to shoot the basket for the extra points and, you know, stand well, there up. There you go. The yeah, I like that idea. And yeah. the other thing about that is, is it allows kids to interact still some. You know, I think yes. that's one of the biggest, uh, I mean, I don't know, teachers might feel a little differently uh, looking inward, but looking outward at the students, I think that's one of the biggest tragedies of, of the COVID education component is that the kids don't get to interact as much anymore. Right. They're, well, they're missing out on that. So I like that you've incorporated some interaction. Uh, yeah. what are, can you think of any other ways that you can really allow these kids to interact more? Okay. So again, a lot of this takes time and I know teachers are really stressed and overworked and, and so you don't have to do something every time you're in class or, you know, I try to at least once a week do something that's a little bit, you know, more fun now that I am, you know, it, we're into our second semester. My school is hybrid. Mm -hmm. So we have a group of kids that are in school Monday, Tuesday, and a group that are outside of school Monday and Tuesday. Then the ones that were out the first of the week come in Thursday, Friday. Um, so y'all are all know, sorts of messed up. Yes, we're, we're all kinds of crazy there. Yeah. But one of the nice things um, that I worked with my one of my colleagues on doing, um, and she, she was her idea, and so I get, give props out to Mindy, who I worked with, because she, it she took her a lot of time. Um, but she did an assignment she usually does in school called speed dating. Uh, and she you know, also teaches history, so she was doing civil rights activists. And all of them, whether they were home or in school, were given um, Civil War activist members, different people from that time uh, that they had to research ahead of time. And then the kids that were in class logged on to their Google Meet and they were assigned an original partner and they go through and have a discussion. Um, so the person in school is talking to someone at home. And they have this discussion going back and forth, talking about, um, you know, who their activist was. You could do it for anything, though. Um, and whether or not the person that they were representing would get along uh, with the other person. She said she uses emojis for that. Um, and they have to also create their own emoji for how they were that person would feel. It's all about really getting into character. Uh, and then the students at school got up and moved after a couple minutes, remember speed dating. So after a couple minutes, yeah. they got up and moved to the next seat. Uh, the computer stayed where it was. And so they were seeing someone else from home uh, and work their way around mm. the room. Um, she lucked out. She had 11 and 11. So, you know, it was an even number there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then what she did to make sure that all the people for all, that were in person still got to talk to each other um, they had an in-class discussion, uh, and then the people that were home all logged into a joint uh, Google Meet and had what she called singles bar, and they kind of talked about each other, you know, talked to each other and got the information um, from everyone that was virtual, and it was really neat because I actually went into her room while she was doing it because her and I had discussed it and everything else, um, you know, kind of picking each other's brains on how technology-wise she could, she could do it. And the kids um, that were home, um, all meeting at the same time, were pulled up on the uh, smart board or you know yeah. LED screen, um, and you could see them all talking in their characters and and everything else. And then so they were, you know, they got to communicate not only with the ones at home that were in school, you know, they paired up, but then they got everyone who was at school got to talk, and everyone that was at home uh, had their own meeting. Oh, that's uh, and, awesome. No, yeah, I and then they. They broke out into groups um, where they were able to, um, they made groups of people uh, parties and they can up to two to like four people and you do ones that may get along, ones that won't get along and then they create their own kind of rally posters and things like that. And wow. So it's really just, I mean, it's thinking outside the box yeah. um, and it is, like I said, it's a little bit time consuming. Would you do that every week? No. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, you'd, you'd get burned out. And I think the yeah. kids would too. Uh, right. But I love the idea. I think these are fantastic suggestions. And I can see a bunch of different ways that you could just play off the same similar concept. Right. Take a little bit and do a different kind of activity. I love it. I just got to think of the, you know, our listeners are probably wondering, you know, what's the overall theme of how teachers deal with COVID teaching and, and whatnot? Well, so far we've talked about bring your own beer, sing, <laughs> singles bars, speed dating. So yes. the answer to COVID is alcohol for, you know. Um, some teachers <laughs> may agree with that. to be like the subtle undertones of this podcast. And I'm going to yes. get fired. So, all right. Uh, uh, yes. Next week you'll have yep. a new a new host yes uh, and maybe a new teacher in my classroom <laughs> right. uh okay so we've got Honestly, time for catchy names even is a way to get the kids you know going say that they... again i was over talk talking over you sure. say that again the catchy names is a way catchy to names. get the kids you know involved in it if you call it the imperialism review you know that's that's not as exciting as if you know you call it the imperialism match point game or the you know the super bowl of imperialism or you know and you make the game kind of yeah. based off of you know i think traditional thinking sometimes would be like you know teenage kids they're they're too grown up for that or they at least want to be too grown up for that kind of stuff but that stuff works it those does. little things like that they make a big big difference okay so we got time here. for one more quick okay. question uh, we've talked about Zoom, we've talked about Google Meets, we've talked about how to use Canvas and PowerPoints and different things like that. Do you have any other technology tools that you found that work really, really well that you could kind of just, as a recommendation, tell people to go and take a look at? Um, there's so many. Um, you can, Edpuzzle is huge. I use Edpuzzle. Um, Edpuzzle? Edpuzzle. It's actually, um, you can track. So I'm not allowed to... Um, be lecturing my students on the computer and live at the same time. Um, so it has to be a little bit more controlled. So a lot of my students on some days while they're home will watch a pre-recorded uh, lecture hmm. through Edpuzzle. I can add in questions. I can prevent them from skipping. I can track how much they've watched of it. Um, even before COVID hit, I had a flip classroom. So my kids were doing the lectures at home and in school, we were doing all kinds of activities. And um, so I had already been very familiar with Edpuzzle, uh, but it's a great, great tool. Uh, Nearpod is another one that I really like. What's that one? Nearpod. Nearpod. Okay. Yes. Uh, it's You can actually add games right into it and have them partner off. And um, essentially, they log in and you control what they see on their screen. Hmm. Um, so it's almost like a PowerPoint, except for it's got way more bells and whistles to it. And so they can't skip ahead. If they close out of the browser and try to open another window, it tells you. Ah, hmm. There's like one person not on screen. <laughs> uh, and then you can start again, who's not there? Um, yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, this has been fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you. Okay, I want to thank Lindsay for coming on to the show. She mentioned a lot of really great resources that you could utilize and check out. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me as she was talking is how much practice it probably took for her to get some of these techniques down or some of these technologies. Uh, but it sounds like it was really worth it. You know, by the time she kind of started getting in a groove there and knew what she was doing, it was worth it. Um, I, I couldn't help but think back with my own teaching model and how many things that I tried to do that just just did not work uh, at the beginning and how many times I would have to sit down with my students and be like look that didn't work and all that sucked please come back to school tomorrow we're gonna work through this we're gonna find something better uh, and by the end you know I had something special and my students really really benefited from it you know and it's that hard work and, and more than anything it took a lot of patience with myself to be able to keep trying, keep trying something different, keep trying something new, you know, not being afraid to fail. And as teachers do that, they take that attitude. That's where special things come from. Um, and so uh, I think we just need more more teachers like Lindsay out there. Uh, and and our students are going to benefit from it. So all right, with that, uh, if any of you know anybody or if you yourself would like to be interested in being on our show, 
please email me directly at brian.bean at stewkent.com. That's Brian with an I, bean just like a vegetable. Uh, with that, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.